This tutorial shows how I used a Geometry Nodes group to iteratively grow the shapes seen here. I assume the user has a good knowledge of Blender, but I have screen cast keys enabled so you can see which keys and mouse keys I am using. Enable the Node Wrangler add-on, but I think I just use that for tidying the nodes. Using the default cube, don't scale it, as will be explained later. With the default cube selected, create the Geometry Nodes modifier. Add a math node set to multiply, which is used to make iterations smaller. Add a extrude mesh node to the green geometry link by just dropping the node on it, and connect the maths node value output to the extrude offset scale input. This forms the arms on which the next iteration are grown. To make the connecting noodle arms between nodes straight, go to Blender's Preferences, the Node Editor, Section of Themes, and change the noodle curving from 4 to 0. Add a Scale Elements node to Geometry to link after the Extrude node, connecting the Extrude's top output to the Scale Selection input. This ensures only the end of the extrude arm is scaled. Duplicate the extrude mesh node and add to the geometry link after the scale element node. Again, take the first extrude mesh node top output and connect to the second extrude node selection input. This ensures that only the end of the extruded arm is extruded to form the next smaller cubes from which the next iterations are grown. Now add a Boolean math node configured as OR, whose two inputs are the top and sides outputs of the second extrude. This is used so that the next iteration only grows from the faces of the second generation extrusion cubes. Duplicate the first math node and connect its output to the second extrude mesh node offset scale input. This is also used to make the iterations get smaller. Select all the six added nodes and create a group. Add a group input for the first extrude selection input. Leave the default name as Selection. Add group inputs for both the inputs of the first math node, calling them Factor and First Extrude. Add another group input for the scale node scale input called extrude scale. Add another group input for one of the second math node inputs calling it second extrude and connect the other math node input to the group input factor. Duplicate the math node, leaving as multiply, and connect the group input factor to one of its input. 
and then create another group input called factor scale and connect it to the other maths input. Add a group output for the Boolean math nodes output and call it selection. Add a group output for the third math node and call it factor. Then create group outputs for the other group input. First extrude, extrude scale, second extrude and factor scale. Now exit the group. With the default cube of edge length 2 and scale 1, set the values of factor and first extrude to 2 and extrude scale, second extrude and factor scale to 0 0.5. Duplicate the group node and with both group nodes selected press F to connect inputs and outputs. Repeat again for the default cube and you will get this. Different size cubes will obviously grow differently as we're changing these input values. To grow the arms for the animation, you could simply animate the offset scale inputs to the two extrude nodes. But I added another group input called growth, which was multiplied to the offset scale inputs of the two extrude nodes as shown. And I then keyframed this value.
Finally, I added a subdivision surface modifier, a shiny metallic principled BSDF material, and gave the object smooth shading to get the pretty reflections seen in the animation. But you will need to use the Cycles renderer as EFE doesn't do the reflections accurately. This resulted in the 2100 frame 1920 by 1020 60 frames per second introduction anima render would have taken nearly three days on my i7 HP laptop, but using the Sheepit renderer farm only cost me about 16,000 points and only took about 100 minutes. I created the regular polyhydron platonic objects by enabling the add mesh extra objects add-on and then via add mesh math function regular solid and then change the type via source in the operator panel. Of course you can just create any objects and apply this geometry. Note if you add a dodecahedron via this method you would need to remove the lines that split the faces Otherwise there will be two extrusions from each face when there should only be one. Also, depending on the initial number of arms and iterations, the ends may grow through each other, in which case reduce the iteration scale. Although these polyhydrons have starting faces that are not square, the arms that are extruded sideways are always square. Only the arms that are normal to the original faces have the correct number of sides. How to position small versions of the original polyhydron at the end of the extrude arms is what I am currently working on. Adding too many iterations will crash Blender, which isn't too bad under Ubuntu, but under Windows the OS completely froze and I had to hard power cycle. This is my first tutorial, so any constructive criticism would be appreciated, and I hope some of this is interesting or useful.